Hello and welcome to Breathwood. My name is David Yates and it has been yet again a long time since I've done a video. And uh, this time around we're going to try something quite a bit different. I'm not going to play didgeridoo for you in this video. Instead, I'm going to share with you an edited recording of a Zoom call that I had with the player and teacher Pamela Mortensen. Now a tiny bit of backstory. I've had uh, several students request songs from me over the years. And I've been a pretty stubborn player and teacher when it comes to making songs. I've tended to stick with improvisation. But as most of you may know out there, when you learn music in the beginning, you learn songs. If you think about some of your first moments singing as a child, you probably learned something like a nursery rhyme. And then throughout our lives, we learn songs on the radio, or we learn songs that are written out if you go to music school. You learn notation if you're a serious music student. Serious. But for some reason in the didgeridoo world, we don't tend to have songs. I think that partly has to do with the fact that this is a traditional ceremonial instrument that has been pulled out of that context. And now it's being influenced by music from around the world. People put their own musical aesthetic into how they play didgeridoo. Um, they may even write songs. And you could go and attempt to learn a song or ask a teacher for a song. but. So far that I've seen, there doesn't seem to be a sort of public domain of songs. Ranging from, you know, if you, if you take the English singing equivalent, you've got everything from Row, Row, Row Your Boat and Twinkle Little Star to Amazing Grace and beyond. So what I'd like to do is not just provide my students with songs they can learn and play, but to begin to build on this idea that the entire didgeridoo community could start creating and sharing songs with each other. And then anyone who wants to can begin to learn these songs and have like a, a repertoire of songs. I've created one for my students called the Dodo Song. And this song, coming from Pamela Mortensen, is Rudu Dance. Rudu Dance. You'll hear her explain it in the video, um, but this video is all about her breaking it down for me. And then we talk about playing it, and we talk about some of the elements of playing this particular song, the structure, the syllables, a little bit of the technique involved. Um, this is really kind of like a first introduction to this song. And for those of you who don't know her, your first introduction to, to Pam. She's a lovely person, lovely player, um, has a lot of musical background beyond didgeridoo, which is why I asked her if she'd consider sharing a song. I think her musical understanding is um, really strong. So you'll have to excuse some of the video quality. It was Zoom. It's a bit fragmented or stuttery at times. My volume for some reason was really low, so I've turned it up in many places, but there'll be moments when you don't hear me that well. Um, but my main focus for this video is to, to share with you how Pam thinks about things and how she teaches. Um, there are definitely moments that were really different from how I approach things, and I really appreciated that. So this is video one of Rudu Dance by Pamela Mortensen, and um, there will be more in the future. Now, before we jump into it, please go to the description below, click on links down there to hear a recording of the song, to go to Pam's website, and to see a printed PDF, not a printed, but a PDF file of the rhythm written out. So you can watch the video and you can also follow along with the document. Um, any questions, please share them in the comments below. And in the comments, let, let me know what you think. What do you think about Pam? What do you think about the song? 
Uh, what do you think about me doing it this way? Uh, there are other players I'd like to invite to do more videos in the future. Um, do you like this approach? If so, let me know down there. All right, here we go. Let's just jump right in. Oh, and um, please excuse the abrupt ending. Uh, I was trying to edit it down so it wasn't quite so long. And we didn't take a moment at the end to say, you know, thanks for doing this. This was so fun. I think we had stopped recording at that point. So you'll notice the video of Pam ends somewhat abruptly. We continued to talk at that point, but it was a little less uh, pertinent when learning the rhythm. Okay, without further ado, we'll dive right in. All right, so Rudu Dance, I hope, is simple enough to where people can play it without too much frustration or without getting too bored. Um, if anybody wants a challenge, they can use these. Um, or, you know, a rock tapping against the side of a ditch or something. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, maybe just a stick from the backyard and your water bottle, you know, it's like whatever. Um, or, you, or you don't have to use anything. But I usually use clap sticks with this piece. And um, the song is basically made up of two different parts. And I'll just play the two parts just back to back so you can kind of hear what they sound like. And I will play them with the clap sticks because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> and what key are you playing in with that dig? Uh, D, but yeah. you could, yeah, you could play this pretty much in just about any key. Some of the lower keys might be a bit of a challenge just because it's more articulated in yeah. some of the parts. So, um, but uh, anyway, here goes. So. <laughs> So, so the actual song is a lot longer than this, but those are just the two main parts. So, so, and you can make this as easy as you want or as hard as you want. That's the nice thing about this song. The way I usually teach people is just to kind of say the words first before they even get on the ditch and then try it through Buzz Lips off the ditch and then try it on the ditch. Nice. And that, and that seems to be pretty effective. So the first part, basically, I'm just going to, 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 to and then there's a little to, 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 to. yep, that's it. That's just the big, yeah, that's just the basic rhythm. So um, through buzzed lips, it would look like this. And that's it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing toot, yeah? Is there two? Yeah, there, there's there's toots. There are toots, but for people who don't know how to toot yet, um, this would be a good practice, either a good practice or a good frustration, one of the two. <laughs> um, but if if you're at the very beginning, um, you can just do a vocal. Mm. Yeah. So so you could just do. do, do a... How do you notate that? I I guess you just kind of said it, but how would you like twa? I would write as. TWA, yeah, t yeah. Um, twa to t would would just be a would just be a t. T t t dit um dit d i t to dit so t and then and then d i t yeah and then dup would be like d u p or something. Twa to dit dup. Yep. Twa to dit dup. Twa to dit dup. Yeah. Yeah. And if that rhythm sounds familiar, it's the twa that if that sounds familiar, the reason why is because it's based on a um, Middle Eastern belly dance rhythm. Oh. <laughs> Whose I name I can't. I once yeah. knew the name for that one. Yeah, I, I've forgotten the name too. I always get the names mixed up anyway. 
It's like, oh, that's Malfouf. It's like, no, it's not. It's Ayub. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of those. So, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of the it's one of the more popular ones, and I just simply can't remember the name of it. But but yeah, it's based on one of the Middle Eastern belly dance rhythms. And now that I think of it, that that very first part is just the very first part of that rhythm. Um, um, yeah. So, all right. So, the trois de tu, trois de tu, trois de tu. Okay. And then through, yeah. And then we already did it through buzz lips. Or. It, like I said, if you can't do a horn quite yet, or if your didgeridoo doesn't do a horn, which some digits don't, um, you just do a vocal on that very last dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have to be a high vocal. It can be, you know, wherever you want it. <laughs> Wherever's, yeah, wherever it's comfortable. I mean, I could do a whole thing on vocals. Um, but, uh, but yeah, wherever it's comfortable. All right, um, let's go ahead and try it on dig. So basically your twa is actually where you're gonna take your breath. Oh. Nice, that's, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Let's try now. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, nice. I love the sound. I'd never, I don't think I've ever thought about a twa and, an, and a breath before. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite a bounce breath, but almost. Um, <laughs> mm. So, um, this is also a rhythm that uh, if you don't know how to circular breathe yet, you can take little micro breaths in between the beats, and I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate that here in a second. But, but I wanted to talk about the things that are in between that twa t -t -t Um It can be anything, <laughs> and I mean anything. So, like the rhythm, the way I play it. So there's like all these little things in between that twa t -t -t um, you could talk. I, I don't know if this will come through, but I'll give it, I'll actually, let me just vocalize it so you can actually hear it. Yeah, whatever you want to put in between. So that's, that's the nice thing about this song is that anybody who learns it can just put whatever in between those beats and it makes it theirs so now i know i'll have people out there who i've i've said that exact same thing to about other rhythms mm -hmm. and the reason i i did a song where that wasn't included is because it seemed to short circuit a lot of people's brains uh. <laughs> they're, they're like they're like don't tell me to play around they're like tell me what to do there so i can learn it <laughs> and then at some well, point there'll be enough of a vocabulary right 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 yeah, I remember going through this when I was learning composition in college because I would come in with pieces that would sound like Bach or Haydn and my teacher and I would be like, well, this is really nice, but, but I want to hear you, you know, it's like, okay. But but yeah, in doing that, that copying of other composers, I developed my own language and it, where eventually I could come in with a piece that sounded like me. Right. So... But if you wanted to do the way I did it, um, let's see. Okay, so the second part of that. Yeah, it'd be like, it's like that T again, just T, and then D, D, E, E. Yeah, so Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Another so, breath there potentially. Uh, let's see. Twa to the two to twa di on the yeah on the twa again. Yeah on the yeah. yeah. So it'd be like breath to the two dit breath di. Yeah. Yep. 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 
Yeah. yeah. And I can see where you're taking breaths in between the beats already, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of what this song is sort of about anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, you've already done it, but with buzz lips. So, let me just go ahead and do it with buzz lips as well. <laughs> So if you just wanted to repeat that, uh, you could. Um. But I like to vary it. Um, so the second, the second time I do that, the second time that I go to, um, I'll follow it up with something different. So the first time, and then on the repeat. Yeah. 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 And then on the third time through, it would be like the first time through. So we've got an ABA. ABA. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now we're going to have a C. <laughs> so C part C starts out the same, but it's going to end up sounding different. Tucka tucka ta at the end. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if taka is a little hard because it is pretty percussive for some people, you can just do dugga dugga deer. Right, it's, right. A little, it's a little bit softer and a little bit easier to get the air around the tongue. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, so yeah. I almost I, use them in, almost interchangeably as in they're similar motions but different air. Right, air right. Air stream. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, because the T is so much tighter than the D, uh, it's a lot harder to get the air around the tongue, and so you end up losing the drone. <laughs> so that that's pretty common. Um so basically, that's the first whole first part. Um, and then you just repeat that the whole thing, and then you'll just have a whole first what I what I call a um, verse. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, what I call a verse. Okay, and this kind of gets into compositional things, uh, like what's the difference between a verse and a chorus? Uh -huh. Okay, so this is like the little songwriting thing that I mentioned in the, the message. Yeah. So I tend to stick with like just very basic song structure. I mean, you have a verse, you have a chorus, you have another verse which may sound a little different than the first one, mm -hmm. and then another chorus, and then an outro, and then you have a song. So, I mean, it's a very, very simple formula, um, but it's very, it's, it's a lot of fun because it allows a lot of room for improvisation if you want to. So, especially on the verse parts. Um, so, all right. So with that said, the um, chorus part is pretty much just... So um, you'll have to excuse me if I vary that a little bit while I play it, because <laughs> it always comes out different when I play it. But when I put it on the dip, okay. All right, 
So the first part of that beat pretty much starts out the same. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. different endings. On. Different endings. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Something. Yeah. 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 It, again, it just allows for a lot of play at the end. But if you wanted like something specific, what I would do is again um that takes you at the end of what's called a phrase and then you go back into your verse so does that kind of make sense it does okay yeah, i'm cool. seeing i'm seeing patterns like the first the verse as you called it you have mm -hmm. toi to do, do, and then something mm -hmm. and then you had an a something a b something back to the a something and then a c something mm -hmm. but always tacked on to toi to do, do. Yep. And now we yep. take that same twa de dit up and repeat it three times and then right. twa to dit dup twa to dit dup twa to dit dup something something whatever it, right right whatever it right is, which could be right. set which you just set and I didn't write in time but now I know like there's you know that's that's the structure of it yeah 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 this someone, is a so, someone wanting oh. the structure can learn a specific written way mm -hmm. and someone wanting to improvise more you could say well there's there's room there to totally. change it up. Totally, yeah, yeah. So that's what makes this rhythm so much fun is that it allows space for those who want to play to play and then those who want structure, <laughs> you know, there it is. <laughs> and you can make that structure as simple as you want it or as complicated as you want it. So, um, so yeah, and that's pretty much the whole song. Um, the ending for me is actually pretty buttoned well, pretty buttoned it is buttoned <laughs> so a buttoned ending is where you just stop there's no there's no fade out or anything so that's that's the difference between a button ending and a fade out so usually on this song i won't fade out i'll just button it up and it's done um so i yeah i what no the way I play it, it's kind of weird because I usually button it up on a um, on a on a verse, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But I, in this case, I would button it up on the chorus. So something like. Um, <laughs> is at the very end yeah yeah so that would be the very very ending <laughs> so in that last chorus what i did was do dear. There's a little pause, pause and then yeah. a do dear. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Cool. <clears throat> um, there's a few things that I noticed that are interesting that I think will be uh, baffling and exciting <laughs> to beginners earlier, like, you know, newer, newer players. Mm -hmm. And even to me, you know, even though I've played 10 years, like when I passed through the workshop with the Bravco, this became a big question for me. Um, how we either play rhythms that are really with the drone running through it, and mm -hmm. it's all just a modulation of the drone, or you start to break it up into little... We The word we landed on in the workshop is bubbles of air. Ah. A lot of that really fast, intense, percussive stuff. Is like right. That kind of stuff. Um, and what I'm hearing in this song is a little of each. Yeah. I hear I hear clear, solid drone, but I'm hearing a lot of clarity in each um, word or syllable. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily yeah, with the drone cutting out completely, but coming kind of close. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, it doesn't quite get into what what the I guess the term is air code where you just air like code, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it just lightly touches on that before it moves on to the drone in the next yeah. little bit. So what so, I'm yeah. imagining is how I would have played this before knowing that you can break it up more and still probably would play it compared to you <laughs> and how my maybe some of my students will play it compared to me would be something like you know you know like where it's uh -huh. oh, right yeah it. yeah 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 and that works too instead of letting it go like to dip that's a good one to maybe focus on. To dip yeah, is a little yeah. cut, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you let it break. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's what makes it more interesting texturally uh, yeah, is yeah. when you when you like break the drone up like that. It's it's not like that constant hit on the drone. Uh, there's that little breakup that kind of makes the ears go, ooh, what was that? You know? <laughs> You know, and it's like, how did you do that? So, so yeah, that little to dip, to dip. Um, that's actually kind of. I, I never really thought about it before because it's just to me, it seems like such a minor thing. Yeah. But to put focus on that, it's kind of like, oh, maybe that is a little more interesting than I thought it was. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah, well, I I see that sound in and of itself. I ha actually, the twa too. I've kind of skipped past the twa, and that's worth attention. Mm -hmm. But the tidit is a technique in and of itself that the average player who's maybe learned like or you know they've played kind of in that way. Right. You right. Know, like like how do I do that? Yeah. So yeah. I almost wonder if there's an exercise just to build. Probably. Uh, you know, just play it by um, <laughs> That's an easy answer. You know, yeah, yeah. It's just repeating it three times. Yeah, start, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can you know, make a whole song out of just that little tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the that's the exciting part. To yeah. Bad and run with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. almost seeing that is sorry, sorry. Like almost uh, seeing that is like the preliminary song to the song. Mm -hmm. If someone mm -hmm. is having trouble putting it all in this one structure, like right, I, right. I just wrote it out, and it's like it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, care. right, right. So this is where I tell people just take one little bit at a time. Um, mm -hmm. um, so like mm -hmm. that very first line, mm -hmm. uh, just take only just that. Maybe practice on it for like two, three days or however long it takes. Really get that under your belt first and then move on to the next thing. Because I... Um, <laughs> Oftentimes, when I was teaching piano, uh, uh, you know, somebody would want to come in and learn like Beethoven or whatever, and then I'd open the book up of Beethoven, and they'd be like, "Oh my God, yeah, there's a lot of notes here. There's a lot of notes here." And it's like, "How am I going to learn this?" And it's just like, "Well, just start with your first note. Right. Just pay attention to that note, and then once you get that note, you go on to the next one." Right. So just you know, just break it down. Just break it down as small as you need to 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 get the whole thing. So. Yeah. So yeah, and I think that's tricky for adults. It is for because adults, like we want to play amazing and interesting. Right, right. Now I gotta, I should be better by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think everybody goes through that, and I'm, it yeah. doesn't matter. I don't think it really matters what level you play at. I know I go through that because when I hear some something like what Tyler Spencer or Dubrovka Lopain plays, I'm like I want to play that now. I mean, yeah. I went through this. I went through this trying to learn Stinky Room. It's like, I want to learn how to play that, like, right now. And it's like, this is going to take time. Because <laughs> in the first place, I don't even know what he's doing in that song. I mean, you know, well, I didn't. I mean, I do now. But yeah. I didn't even know what he was doing in that song. So I didn't even know the technique that went under it. 
and um, learning the technique itself was just like wow and then you know trying to get the rhythm on top of that technique was just like something extra so yeah. it's just like when i finally got most of the song under my belt i was just like dang that was quite a trip you know <laughs> that was really quite a trip and it was a great learning experience mm -hmm. so and to have him kind of go on the journey with me because i mean he he knew i was learning it yeah and to have him go on the journey with me and he's like it sounds good but it's not stinky room yet. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so how do I make it sound like stinky room? You know, <laughs> so, so yeah. Oh, and I need to, since you just said that the title of his song and that had a certain essence, this is the Rudu dance. I need to yeah. write yeah. that down for myself. What's the essence of this song? So we've got the like syllables and rhythm, but what's the, what's the, what's it about? Is it? <laughs> That's a good question because I was trying to. So I was like, "What is this song about?" And it's like, "What's, <laughs> what's Rudu mean?" <laughs> well, Rudu is, I don't know. The closest I can come is what happens when you cross a kangaroo with belly dancing. You know, it's just like, okay. you know, it's like what would happen, you know, if you crossed a kangaroo with belly dancing? And to me, this song is what results from it. It's like, you see this kangaroo, you know, they're used to going like this, but, you know, not going like this so much, right? And so it's almost like this kangaroo's trying to, yeah, it's, yeah, it's almost like this kangaroo's trying to figure out how to wiggle in ways that kangaroos don't, you know? So, so yeah. Um, oh, that's so great. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, I, it's, it's a kangaroo with Middle Eastern rhythmic funkiness. Yeah, yeah. Bounce, yeah. Ba bounce, ba bounce. And I'll be honest, um, I'm a huge Dead Can Dance fan. I don't know if you know who they are. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm a huge Dead Can Dance fan. And the first time I ever heard their music, I was just like, holy cow. So there's a lot of influence in my ditch playing with them. Um, not necessarily the darkness, but definitely the rhythms. <laughs> Right. Definitely the rhythm. So, so yeah. There's a key there in what you're saying, which is really difficult, I find, as a teacher to imbue that in students. Yeah. You know, the message for me is listen to music, like get obsessed totally. with an artist. Totally. Until over time, just from listening to it and loving it, you start to absorb some yeah. of it. It has yeah. to be in you alive. Yeah. You say, yeah. Then? Yeah. Totally. Totally. I mean, it's for me. It's not enough to um, just listen to d other ditch players and go, "Oh yeah, I really like this and like that." I mean, there's definitely other influences from other genres that play into the music that I do. Dead Can Dance is one of them. Stella Mara is one, which is very much like Dead Can Dance. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. What's her name? Uh, or what's their name? Uh, another Middle Eastern group. Yeah, there's like this whole Middle Eastern theme, uh -huh. um, but there's there's also some like Indian music, like Sheila Chandra is another one that I really like. It, uh, if you don't know who Sheila Chandra is, definitely check her out. She's an amazing vocalist. She's um, of Indian descent, but she's from England, and uh, she has she, most of her work is done a cappella. But there's some songs that she does that's based on tabla speak, and she calls it. She calls all these pieces speaking in tongues, and it's just basically, basically, I can't do it as well as she does. But it's like, and you know, she'll just like go through this whole thing, and I'm like, how would that sound on ditch? You know, yeah. maybe not doing it exactly the way she does, but like incorporating some of it. Yeah. So yeah, definitely other, you know, other people from other genres. Um, I remember Tyler Spencer, I asked him, it's like, what are your influences? And he, and he said, definitely Pink Floyd. And I was like, <laughs> yep, I can totally hear that in your music. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, I, I highly encourage people to go out and listen and get inspired by other people's music other than ditch players. Um, because there's like a whole huge world from 
pop music to world music to uh, electronic music. Yeah. I know um, I know uh, Andres Mikkel is very heavily influenced by the electronic music scene, especially EDM. Uh, yeah, so so that's where he gets a lot of his influence. And I mean, it would blow your mind <laughs> on how much that would really influence your music once you get into it. Yeah. So. Oka, Oka is big for me. Yeah, Oka is cool. Years, so. I love Oka. Yeah. A lot of the rhythms and a lot of the ditch rhythms in Oka songs are pretty simple, but mm -hmm. just really impactful. A lot, lot, you know, beautiful, simple, clean wobbliness. Yeah, yeah. So that's what my playing, I think, ended up being for many years. Anytime mm -hmm. I play at a show, it was like long bouts of wobble. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Oka, you know, just right. the wa the wa a do 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 Yeah. 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 Right now it's Wardruna, so I'm curious to see. Oh yeah, Wardruna's really cool too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to get into more of the like the Northern European like way Northern European because I'm part Scandinavian. Okay. And um like getting into the Swedish music which is more melodic based but there are some things that are that are rhythmic based too yeah. and you'll find that when you start diving into other cultures a lot of times they don't follow the western you know our western ideas of what rhythm is yeah. you know you'll end up with like you know seven eight five eight yeah. ten eight you know <laughs> whatever and i'm just like re reeling off all these meters but like 10 beat rhythms 12 beat rhythms 15 beat rhythms that we were just like whoa that doesn't fit within our you know <laughs> frame you know so and that's one reason why i love middle eastern beats because it doesn't fit within that you know four four or three four or <laughs> two four <laughs> um type type of frame that western music is so yeah. so yeah so for those non-musicians, four four, you think of square. So one, two, three, four, like three that. four, yeah. So and then three four, which is like waltz, yum, bum, 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 but yeah, it's a triangle. Mm -hmm. And then two four, it's just down and then up. So down one up, two yeah. one two. Um, so yeah, those are the three, three most common meters used in music. So, yeah. and out of those three, four, four is the most common. So yeah. it's just very boxy, very square. Right. And, you know, sometimes it's a challenge to make that sound interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah, ask any drummer, they'll tell you. It's just like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, what, I, what I hear is that that can be really opened up by listening to other, yeah. other music. And, yeah, yeah. And I almost wonder if it's not so much about going and listening to the music in order to intellectually learn another rhythm to put it in oh, the no, no. just to absorb it and let yeah, it yeah yeah just totally t yeah. yeah just you know listen to it like you're five you know <laughs> it's like oh that sounds cool if it makes you dance do it you know it's like, so so yeah i find that a lot with um funk rhythms um yeah let's see uh let's see example of a funk rhythm would be Says, dum, dum, ding, dig, dig, dum, ding. Yeah, yeah, it's very bouncy. It's very bouncy. Yeah, so I really, I, I don't know, I tend to like bouncy rhythms. <laughs> so, kind of, you know, like bopping down the street. <laughs> so, 